Alert! SOS! They're taking us! I hope that this is not just a cry for help, but that we can alert everyone who is going through this abduction process. Many abductees are placed under a hypnosis process, a type of memory suspension, so that there is no memory of these attacks when people are taken from their homes after the experiments and manipulations. During my childhood, I went through many abductions and contacts. In my first memories, I was about three to four years old when I started to be visited by little blue spheres, which I now call orphans. These spheres have accompanied me since my first incarnation on Earth. During the contacts, when I was taken to the experiment room, I remember that there were other children, and we were studied and experimented, believing that we were just playing. From three to nine years old, I really thought I was in a big summer camp with kids from all over the world. We interacted through exercises with some types of technological cubes that could transform into anything, but we had to know how to manipulate them. It was often like a puzzle, as they wanted us to train and increase our skills and abilities, and then interact with our own future and our timeline. I will explain further about this. We could also create exoskeletons, bodies and equipment that materialized in front of us. Our ideas and imagination were stimulated at all times, and that was the key to everything. Through mental commands on the cubes, they responded to our desires and emotions, and depending on what happened with the cube, the children were taken to different rooms, where each one had to participate in a type of game, which, in fact, we have to realize that it was all real, and that everything we saw happened in our timeline in our future. Present and future happened at the same time, in the same experiment room. I was used to map people, and locate where they were in real time. I also had to locate beings from other planets. As I had already trained on a toy sphere, which I loved when I was much younger, everything was very easy for me. It was like a game. They would give me a name, an image or a specific voice, and I could go to the place, and see everything around, and through the beings that monitored us, my mind was projected on a plasma in the next room, where the other children entered into their timelines in different other ways. Everyone who entered the simulation room began to understand what was happening at that moment. It was as if those children and pre-adolescents accessed adult consciousness to the point that they knew what was happening and were projected into their minds as agents within what we had previously thought was a game. I also had to map the kids in the experiment room and their bodies in the timeline when they were agents on some mission in the future. I could watch these children as they encountered their adult experience in the future. I noticed that they heard voices as if it were some being helping them, however, they were themselves passing the information to their adult self. Over time, I understood that the other children who entered the simulation served the project as agents. It was in this child's body, in this timeline, that all the files were printed on them and their potentialities were increased so that in their future self, everything would happen at the same time, generating mediumistic abilities and even instructions on equipment that were used by them. I know it sounds crazy, but that's how it was. Our minds, at this moment as children, carried information and technologies to our future selves. When the simulations and experiments were over, the beings I know as creator sons, such as the Aralim and Ophanim, placed us inside Ophans, the blue spheres, and returned us to our homes. It was like an incredible dream with imaginary friends, but I think like me, others began to understand that it wasn't just dreams. Even because when we returned, many had gone through some procedure that left marks on our bodies. Throughout my childhood, when these orphans contacted me, they passed through the window, or even the walls, and stayed on top of me, moved in the air, then approached, and I tried to touch them. This experience marked my childhood for a long time. In some visits and contacts, the orphans approached slowly, and placed me inside them. At that moment my body felt very light. It felt like I could float in the air inside this blue sphere, which had four rings that revolved around this device. In fact, I was projected in the astral body, outside the physical body, 
and I was taken to incredible places. Everything felt like a dream, or I could have contact with other human children like me, and others a little different. One group of these children had bluish skin, and another group had almost golden skin. These golden ones had a different shape, but they were humanoid like the others. They had a different head from the blue ones, and only had three long fingers. On the feet, the heel touched the ground, together with the two front toes, making it appear that the center of the foot did not touch the ground. These encounters that the orphans put me through lasted a long time in my life. I have many memories from my childhood, and one of them is that I was always visited by a woman and a man. He was very tall and had white hair and very light skin. He was like a bodyguard accompanying the woman. When the woman arrived, I always heard a low sound that calmed the whole environment so much that my brother didn't wake up and neither did my parents. It sounded like a sound that left everyone mesmerized. I heard the sound too, but it didn't affect me. This woman took me out of the crib, stayed with me on her lap, and I felt somehow safe. I didn't cry, and I wasn't afraid. Some visits were only in the bedroom at home, until they started taking me elsewhere. This place was like a bedroom, but there were things in it that were different from what I was used to. There was no window, I just remember the walls all the same color, and ice white, and with nothing hanging. There was some kind of carpet, and some toys on the floor, scattered around, where the woman put me to play. I liked a specific toy, because it caught my attention more than the others. It was like a crystalline sphere, the size of a tennis ball, which emitted a luminosity, and images were projected within that sphere. It was made of a material that resembled a hard rubber, but at the same time, it was light, and every time I hit or lifted the ball, images appeared, as if projecting around it, and inside it, like a kind of small projector and a screen at the same time. I could see inside the sphere, other children playing, and it caught my attention. This woman would move toys around, and watch how I behaved, and she would often hide the sphere, to see if I would miss it. I, most of the time, could find where she hid the sphere, and I refused the other toys. The interesting thing, was that this sphere had the ability to show me, in addition to the other children, my home and my family. So I fixed my mind on that sphere, and something was always shown to me, and when I threw it from one side to the other, it would change color. This room was not in a stationary place, as it was often on Earth, at other times it was on the moon of our planet, and sometimes on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. When the room was on Earth, we were always in a desert place, mountainous, or in the middle of some dense forest. But when we were taken to some moon, the way they took us, and how we got into this environment was different. Sometimes we were all together, and then, separated into groups, according to the experiments and abilities they sought in the children. I rarely had the presence of other children with me in this toy room, and when it happened, they would put us to interact and play, and they would observe how we played with the toys. Once, they put a girl in this room with me, and she had a sphere just like mine, sitting on the floor and I was next to her. When they took the spheres from our hands, we were sad and started to cry, even so the woman didn't give us the toy back. It was then that during the crying, which must have lasted a long time, we got up and went to try to get the spheres from the hand of the woman who was monitoring us. She lifted the spheres high, and the girl and I tried to climb on the woman's leg to reach our toys. At a given moment, we both stopped crying, and I believe that, due to the great desire we had to take the toys, the woman released the spheres in the air, but they remained floating. The woman backed away and stared at us as we stretched out our arms and stood on tiptoe to reach the toys, which was impossible as they were about two meters high. Then, something spoke very loudly inside our mind. The woman sent the information by telepathy. Order the spheres to come down to you and take them. We spent some time looking at that woman who didn't utter a single word through her mouth, but we understood perfectly through telepathy. I called the sphere down, and the girl did too, but they didn't move. 
Then the woman said, With the mind. Order with your minds. We did what she said. I put all my will, and with my mind, I ordered the sphere to descend, and it descended slowly towards me. The girl did it too. The interesting thing was, that even at a young age, the girl and I understood that command perfectly. It was as if something increased our perceptions, and we were a little more aware of things. I can't explain it very well. But we managed, from that moment on, to understand that woman, and our consciousness increased with each contact. When the spheres were very close to both of us, we touched them, and they emitted a very strong light, so strong that I closed my eyes, and then I was at home, on the bedroom floor, and lying down. As I was very young, even though I gained a little more awareness during the contact, when I returned home, I didn't understand the things I had experienced. Everything was very new, and of course, with age passing and experiences happening, I became a little more aware, but I always believed that all other children in the world went through the same things I did. This woman who took me to the room always told me never to tell anyone about the visits, the room, the sphere, the children. But as my mother sometimes found me out of bed, sleeping on the floor, or in another room in the house, she didn't understand what was happening and thought it was a type of sleepwalking or that some spirit was pulling me out of bed. I would then tell her about the things that happened, but it was a waste of time because when it was not considered by her as a creation of my mind, she would say that they were imaginary friends and that every child had them or that they were just dreams. The woman always warned that this would happen, but that I shouldn't trust anyone and not talk about the contacts. To be continued.